in on this thing. We already did. I'm going to do a little <laughs> more. So that's my game. I want to. I just want to see if the Reds can sneak their way into the playoffs. It's one of yeah. my picks. So yeah. uh, let's run through the game time app for you real quick, and then our guy Tyler Stevenson is going to join us from the Cincinnati Reds. So best last minute ticketing app in the country. You do not have to wait or stress last minute for help with your tickets. Um, and make sure you use the code FT Live to be part of the FT Fam and get hooked up. Obviously, with twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply, um, and you don't need to plan last minute like you used to. Exclusive flash deals available for you as well as we run through a little tour of what the app brings to the table. And that game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. Then, guess what? Game time will credit you one hundred ten percent of the difference because. It's not happening, okay? Uh, again, FT Live is the code. Terms apply. Download game time. Uh, without the stress, last-minute tickets uh, guaranteed for you. Um, and we'll swing back in a sec with our guy Tyler Stevenson of the Cincinnati Reds. Have you have any arguments yet with uh, David Bell trying to take you out of a game too early? Like we got a great <laughs> play-by-play last week. I don't think either of you were on or maybe caught it, but um, Brandon Woodruff mm-hmm. pitched a complete game shutout last week, and he was going over like the exact number. I think Council was like, "Fine, okay, but you don't get to go over whatever the number was one <laughs> one oh eight or whatever, right?" And then he's on the mound like, "Shit, I got." Nine pitches left, whatever, <laughs> really? right? Like fastball, fastball, he gave us yeah, the whole play by play, and it was fascinating, just like the back yeah. and forth. And obviously, he's been in the league for a bit. Mm-hmm. But Good is there ever a time where you're up there and you're like, uh, give me, give me I really more. don't fight when he comes <laughs> out. I think the only time that I did was in Milwaukee. I kind of gave him one of the like I was like 110 pitches or something, and I going against Owen Miller, division rivals. Like, hey, I oh, he gave, I'll, he gave him the hand. I'll give him yeah. this, and then yeah, yeah. afterwards, he was like, I didn't see it, and I was yeah. telling me, I was like. No, I did it. Like, you can go back and look. I did this. Yeah. And you didn't see it, but it was there. And then I ended up getting him out, and then he found out afterwards. But that's probably the only thing that's remotely close. Did he that. like it? Did he say, like, yeah, give me that once in a while? I'm, I'm, I mean, he he can probably speak to that a lot better. But I would <laughs> I would assume dumb. that a coach yeah. would like competitors and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. Unless they were gung-ho, 100% you're coming out. I don't care what you did. But that's how you get respect. And that's how you, you get a player. Like, yeah. when we had it, it was Johnny Cueto mm-hmm. when he came out. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, whoa. And all of a sudden, Dusty Bay got gotcha. you. Yeah. Like, he understood. Yeah. And that's the relationship that you're starting to have with your manager, and I think it's awesome. FT Live on the field in Cincinnati. Braun, Frazier, Danny Graves, and fantasy football superstar Tyler <laughs> Stevenson joining us right now. I don't know Catcher about on that. Cincinnati. Well, <laughs> tell us, though, because you sat down. You're excited about it. And these guys, yeah. I mean, I know you play. Do you play? Yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah, and it's big in the clubhouse. Oh, so. yeah. You're a rookie fantasy football rookie player. Rookie fantasy, fantasy playing football. Playing on a team with a bunch of rookies. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, first time ever playing and had to discuss some stuff. I don't know, might make some trades here pretty soon. But we're one and one. Really good week run, Week one. Kind of struggled this past week, but it's a long season. Who's your teammate when you say we? Yep. And also, is this a Reds fantasy football it league? It is. It's, okay. it's the Reds fantasy league. Um, I'm with two of the trainers, Tomas Vera and Ryan Ross, and – they they have a lot more experience and mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like the owner of the team so I'm just kind of <laughs> let me give you advice the whatever Tomas says I would do the opposite do the opposite okay. <laughs> yeah so like, how much he, NFL does Tomas really know he's a big Packer fan loves is he loves Aaron the Rogers. Packers loves uh, Aaron so now I got we got to ask him if he's a Jet fan I I don't even think he's a fan anymore since yeah. he's down <laughs> yeah I know I mean, huge yeah, Packer anything, he's, I've been a doing Packer f- fan I'm doing fantasy for 17 years <laughs> all this stuff um Biggest, so does he have to clear trades through you then like are you the final say ownership approval I, I like feel like yeah like um when I'm done here we're gonna go talk because he was kind of busy we need a running back <laughs> okay we need a little more depth um you didn't have Chubb did you no the team okay. we were playing they had Dobbins who went down with his Achilles and then mm-hmm. they had Chubb oh. but they smoked us regardless so I mean it, it didn't even matter um I mean, yeah, you we, can we discuss who you'd like. We've just got some fantasy advice right uh, here. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, but top they're five. the ones I know a lot more. Um, we got Deshaun, like I said, as our quarterback. We've got Tyreek. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I can just pull up the team right now. <laughs> yeah, you can. Up. Also, did you guys have about... a party? Sorry, top oh, five. Yeah. Did you guys have a party to, to do the draft? Oh, like, man. How so did this we, go down? we were 0 for 2. So we were going oh, to no. do it um, our uh, West Coast road trip when we went to like San Francisco, Arizona, and. Anaheim, we 
we're going to do it. I don't even know where we went first. I think we went, I don't know. It got it's canceled. September. It, it's... Yeah. It got canceled the first time <laughs> uh, because we were getting in late. And then we were going to do it the first night, or we played a day game in Arizona. Some, we had issues with the plane. We sat on the plane for eight hours. Oh, what? Oh, my gosh. And we took off at 2.30 in the morning. We land in San Francisco at like 5.30. So those like first two days in San Francisco, we were just toast. How would you guys do in that series? I uh, honestly don't remember. We lost two out of three. Okay, well, it's so the plane's the, the, fault. The, yeah. yeah. Eight hours so, the plane. Fuck, eight hours? So we were supposed to do it. We were, like we had it all set up. We had a place in San Francisco at the hotel that we were going to get in early, had a room and everything, and then – Trying to find, come to find out, we're gonna be sitting on the plane for eight hours. There's something with it with the engine, so we ended up doing it. I think one like Sunday afternoon here. Um, quarterback, we've got Deshaun, Joe Mixon, running back, Madison, running back from Minnesota, Tyreek, Metcalf. Then we have Pitts, and then Flex, we have Michael Thomas, Saints defense, and then Justin Tucker. Okay, Uh, so did you have any say in those picks? Uh, they had a lot more research than I did. So they uh, went, they went, they didn't care about the quarterback at the end because, well, so we had, we had a lot six, of people pick quarterbacks early and then you had to figure out at the end what yeah, you wanted. We had the six picks. We were kind of yeah, like in between. In, in between. Like we had obviously our eyes on all the top like quarterbacks, but they kind of went. Somebody picked, I think, Mahomes first or Allen, somebody like that. Wow. And then it was just like all of them kind of went right, right ahead of us. So, um, We'll see. So you're open for business. You're you're from Georgia. <laughs> Georgia guy, yep. Are you a big Georgia uh, Bulldog oh, fan? Yeah. They snuck one out of there oh, last man, game. That first half scared a little. Scared yeah, everybody the, the, there. The past two years have been good. Yeah. Um We'll see how it goes this year. Love Kirby, what he's done to the program. The mailman, Setson Bennett, his story was incredible. He knows and it. Yeah. What he, I mean, I thought he was a stud, and I mean, I hope he gets a shot at the NFL. But we'll see. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, what he did, and then their offense coordinator left and went to Baltimore. So I think they're still trying to figure out mm. kind of what their identity is. But they've got playmakers all over the field. They they can recruit. So I trust Kirby. He's a future analyst. I'm telling you, he's great. He can break it down. So <laughs> I got two questions on that front. One, do you have any famous friends in Cincinnati? Like you friends with any of the Bengals? They swing by, and also, can you get by like busy streets of Cincinnati after a game or something? to get to a car like let's say someone's picking you up and you had to go through you know a few hundred reds fans are you gonna get crushed uh i've been noticed yeah yeah uh you can tell just, like, on, right just, on, just on for context alone, no. yeah yeah um, not even the name just yeah. on looks alone. No, hey you're no. you're, you're, you're tall and handsome dude. you play for the reds <laughs> no it's fun i mean like, you know you, you guys you guys played here like what the, what the yeah. city is what they love i mean they they love their sports they and do. i'm very grateful to be where i'm at and be a part of this franchise and um, it's not, it's not a big city. Like I grew up in Atlanta. I love it, but it's, it's a huge city and I love it here. It's small. They love their sports and, um, that's yeah, fun. Famous people. Um, I mean, we met Burrow, mm-hmm. T Higgins, Chase. They came to opening day last year. Um, we have a house in Kentucky and McPherson's a couple houses down from us. So we met him a few times. He's a kicker. Yeah. Oh, you're a Kentucky guy. Oh, he's a beast. I'm a Kentucky guy. Yeah. See, I just learned about that. I live in night. Kentucky got the too. The Ohio yeah. guys and the Kentucky guys. I live right. You can probably see the house mirror in Fort Thomas. That's perfect. Yeah. Me too. You're in my there house. You go. <laughs> I, I bought a uh, Moose's house. Oh, there you go. Oh, Moose, nice. Yeah, yeah nice. he's got he's got a and show then house. McPherson bought Sonny's house. Oh, okay. So it's funny. Yeah, it all kind of wow. lined up, and, and I think before Sonny, AJ Green owned that house. Hey. Like, man, it's pretty good. It's just pretty good line. Good juju, good right juju in there. Yeah. Pretty, pretty good line. You guys are oh, yeah. definitely um, <clears throat> raising the curve for uh, teeth over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was Danny's big thing. <laughs> hey, so I got We talk about football and baseball players. I always have this conversation. I just thought about it now. You take a baseball player and have them throw a football or catch a pass. Oh. They're going to do it easy. easy. You're going to have them shoot a three-point basket easy. Yep. You can't – I'm not saying we're the most athletic. I think basketball and football players are the most athletic. But if you put them, a basketball or football mm-hmm. player, in a baseball situation, they look silly as all oh, hell. Yes. Oh, yeah. So I've always had that conversation with people and feel like, are you sure? I'm like, bro, take – I can hit a three-pointer right now. Easy. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. they can't hit a ball. And some guys can't no. even get the ball to the infield. So I, I would hope I you agree, agree with me I on agree. that situation. We, we watched uh, – the Bengals, Burrow came out yep. MVP. And Burrow the, could swing it a yeah, little bit. Yeah, no, it's super athletic. 
watching some of those offensive linemen, though. Mm-hmm. Or, or even those. trying to throw some oh, of those big, guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I Few think, and far between. Look at yeah. first pitches from baseball. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from basketball and, and football players. Uh-huh. Often it's ugly. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that. I think if you can get any baseball player, I feel like they can – Look somewhat athletic. In yeah, the other dribble the ball between your legs, go oh. by. You know what I mean? I'm not saying we're the most athletic. Those are the athletes, yes, but sure. we're better all around, all around players. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree. Mm-hmm. Who's the MVP of the Reds this year? We uh, one of the MVP of the Reds. Yeah, we we got a name from C. Trent Rosecrans earlier who joined us. You know, who's covering your team every day. Can't trust C. Trent too much though. Right, I want to make sure we fan. get it from. A What's player. that? He's a dogs fan. Yeah, all right. So uh, that's okay. what I mean. You they trust him? Give him twenty more percent. Uh, you've seen so many guys <laughs> yeah. obviously contribute from top to bottom. I think it's got to be name. Spence. That's what it's got to it's yeah. be Spence, what he's, what he's done this year. Um, offensively and defensively, what he's been asked to be able to do. Like, what I mean, he's played, I feel like, every position. Mm-hmm. But um, just how valuable that is in today's game and what he's done, it's been it's been super special. And I think McLean, before he got hurt, I mean, he was up there as well, like, um, I mean, everybody. I mean, there's TJ Friedel who's having a heck of a year. Like, look at some of these guys. Like, we wouldn't be where we're at without them. Do you look at the Twins in a series like this, even whether it's in your head or anyone talking to the dugout, and go, thank you? Because last year, and you played with Tyler Malley. He's a great pitcher. Obviously, he's gone through <laughs> injuries. But regardless of, of Tyler's talent, even if he was on the field, the return that you guys oh, got yeah. there, um, just, you know, Spencer and Encarnacion Strand contributing like that this year. I mean, usually when trades are made, it's like, oh, we got to wait years to grade mm-hmm. it. I was like, no, nah, Reds won that one. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, not only that, but it, um, the, I mean, I feel like the past couple of trades, like Marte, he was a part of that that big trade. It was, I think, last year, year before. And um, even like look what Fraley and Phillips, they came over from the Mariners as well. And yep. Benson. Benson from Cleveland and uh, what Crawl's been able to do and um, – yeah, I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's been impact players right away. Do you go to Nick Crawl then and say, like, good job? Man. Like, <laughs> he deserves that. He, he he definitely deserves that. Would what he, he like what that? What's he like? I think so. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. LSU guy, big football fan. He's awesome. He's always around the clubhouse mm-hmm. and always talking to us. So he's really the only GM that I've ever known. But talking to some other guys from other teams, they really appreciate him. That's cool. So tell me, we were just talking about this before, and we, we ran out of time with Spencer, but – What's going on with the development program, both minor and major league, that's creating a lot of instant success for ball players? Like specifics. Man. Is there any, you know, specific stories even, right? Like I, I try to avoid the, the cookie cutter answers if you can. Like, is there something that you see? And like you said, like you're only here, but yeah. do you notice something that's working that's like putting guys in positions to succeed so quickly? I feel like I don't know. From so I got drafted in 2015, and then in 2019, my first big league camp. This was the first year that this like whole staff, um, big league staff, kind of came together. And I feel like s- since then, like you kind of saw a flip. And I guess just like culture wise, I don't know if I can pinpoint it to one thing, but I feel like what David and all of them try to do is get a lot of like team stuff. And like in spring training, we we did a lot as a team, and we actually had a three point contest. Oh, um, they didn't Will, call Will, Meyer, Will, Will Myers <laughs> won that one. I tried my best, didn't go well. Will um, for real. <laughs> but He's a great I don't know. I, I think just what we've created as a group, and I feel like it's just been all of us together, like rooting for each other, pulling for each other. And it's like, okay, if somebody doesn't get the job, like we have full confidence in the guy behind us. And I feel like it's just kind of been contagious throughout everybody on the on the team so, um I, as a catcher I, I don't think people understand how tough of a job that is um you know uh, on a regular team that has five starters and your same bullpen guys you've had to deal with different starters lot, coming yeah. from different from double a yeah. from triple a how hard is that to adjust or or help them adjust at this level yeah i feel like I feel like our bullpen has been pretty much, for the most part, the same group, which has been great. I mean, the, what they've done this year, the tasks that they've been asked, like we would, we really wouldn't be here without them, what they've been able to do. Um, but, yeah, I'm starters. I mean, I feel like we've we've had so many different guys come through, some injuries, sadly. But some of these guys who come up, it's just sitting down, hum, having conversations with him. And, like, DJ, like, I remember, like, catching Spires for his debut. And it, DJ is just like, hey, like, what do you do versus righties and lefties? And like, we're not going to try to do anything different. Like what you've done in the past has been plenty good enough. And I think it's just getting those guys comfortable. Like don't overthink it. Like, you know, like DJ always talks about 
it's the same game that we've been playing. It's mm-hmm. the same fundamentals. If you win, if you get strike one, good things usually happen. And yeah. if you put yourself in good situations and counts, like hitting's hard enough. Like yeah. don't don't give a hitter too much credit. And whenever you're behind in counts and you're forced to throw fastballs and and count, like that's usually where your damage is done. Do you use America's team when you talk to people? Like, like oh, who do you play for? America's yeah. team. Uh, that's still like, caring because like that, that was that, into that. That does need to come back. I feel yeah. like it, it's yeah. kind of, I it's haven't kind of heard it as much lately, but I loved it when it first came out. And I'm like, I, I felt like it kind of faded almost because, like, you guys were proving people wrong to an oh, extent, sure. right, at the beginning of the year. And then now people are like, oh, no, the Reds are actually good. So yeah, I'm like, no. wait, what happened? Because that, that one interview that kind of set it off oh, yeah. with, who was it, India, and someone else was next to him. TJ. I think it might have been TJ. It was during that – I think Kansas City, Houston. That when we were when we won like twelve in a row. Um, yeah, that was a fun time and <laughs> just, sneak just trying that in. to just play fundamental baseball. I mean, yeah, if you can do that and just play clean baseball, good things usually do happen. Can you do like I'm always <laughs> promoting guys to just fuck around with the reporters after the game a little more. So you know, like if you pull off a big walk off win, just be like, don't don't forget like this is still America's team. Yeah, you know, I mean, we, just we, give we need us a line we'll, or something. I'll start spreading that out, and we need to boy trent give him a little yeah, yeah give him some would something you to write about to do that or would you tell somebody else to do that no i'll do it nice Gotta thank do you do something cool perfect. tonight and i can do that perfect nice. all right we're gonna look out for it we'll be at the That's game fine. dude great Easy. to have you and on then we yeah. should run it. it thank you Appreciate it. obviously he doesn't we're gonna run, run it, it. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we will promote the hell out of it people are paying attention <laughs> Try my to this best show. america baby <laughs> thank you america's tyler great to see you man thank you i appreciate it tyler steven with t stevenson with us on ft live and we'll be joined by royce lewis of the minnesota twins coming up next this year good have you liked it not just for yourself as a pitcher on the mound but obviously when you're not pitching the games end quicker you still get the same amount of action like do you think it's been a a big positive for the sport i think it has been i think it has been i I remember going through spring training the whole adjustment period i'm getting pitch clock violation every five pitches did you get a lot of them (laughs) yeah i kept getting them (laughs) i would throw a pitch and like i would like take a few steps forward grab the ball walk back and then the clock would be at like four seconds and like i started getting a a ton of them but like the the moment you start getting used to it like the moment you start you you gotta you gotta accept you gotta embrace it and then the moment you start seeing it and then you see the results you know the games are quicker people are engaged Mm -hmm. you you are able to just like remain in the moment i used to wander a lot with my head i used to like think too much trying to outsmart every single pitch like the pitch clock i i get the ball i hear the sign then i execute so like it keeps me in a good rhythm and it prevents me from like overthinking at times i was at soto last night having dinner oh, so nice fire why yeah, didn't Vado really come with you where is he is he is he with the there's no telling what he's doing in there right right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh well they were traveling too yesterday yeah they... hey listen after the game today, guess where I'm going? Wait, Soto? This Jeff dude. Ruby. Are you really? Oh, the yeah. downtown? Well, Waddy, what's up, new man? One. New one, baby. The new one? You've been there yet? Yeah, no, yeah. no, a lot of the guys what's went up? last night. How you doing? How's this dude? Tommy Watkins, man. This is the beauty. <laughs> he's kind of clueless at third, but he's <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Nothing, man. Go ahead. Say he left you. <laughs> Tommy, boy. He's cool. No, it's cool. Hey, so you're getting the MVP tonight. Yeah. That's good awesome, year last year. It was yeah, fun. man. It was cool. Go get a little video yeah. trip. Congratulations, dude. That's I take my hat off. Yeah, it's just, just a little. Hey, hey he told me not to because I'm kind of balding a little bit oh, up top. Oh, no, now we got to see it. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's kind of getting good. thin a little bit. No, yeah, you're good. Just just do good. this. Look up a little bit. Like you're looking up. There, nobody will see it. Yeah, I don't know if the fans get up there that right now, do they? <laughs> but uh, no, my wife, this year, this is kind of funny story. My wife threw me on the bus. I didn't know it. They have like a wives group text. Uh oh. And so. Uh, I guess Royce shaves his head like before every game or something like that. And so my wife said, maybe Kyle should start doing that now <laughs> so he can hit better. Oh, and I, wow. and then Royce came in and said, hey, your wife was kind of bashing you a little bit. Because <laughs> his girlfriend told him to tell me. And I was like, Damn. wow. You didn't know about the tech, the group text at all? No, I'm not in the wives. Thank you. I know you don't. You don't, don't, don't know. Know. Did you address it or did you just let it go? Yeah, I called it out. Yeah. I called her out and she, she apologized. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. Back on the field at Great American Ballpark, Scotty Braun, Todd Frazier, Danny Graves. I got the Reds legends, and then I got the instant legend of Minnesota. We'll do the bragging for him because I know he's going to be humble about it, but <laughs> Royce Lewis, a.k.a. Mr. Grand Slam. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, guys. Are people trying to give you shit about your Grand Slams? Like, all right, dude, base is loaded. Come on, <laughs> give us a break here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, opposing teams, uh, my teammates, uh, every time they're like, yeah, at this point you're just you know you're annoying us you know you just gotta <laughs> so it's it's been fun man i get i get a little bit of crap for it but uh yeah it's been awesome what's the number at five 
five career. Five, five career. One was last year. One was last year. Yeah. And four this year. Yep. Four in like the last two weeks. It's even- yeah. <laughs> I think I only hit like three in my I career. was going to say there, there are some players that have been in the league for a long ass time that are home run hitters mm-hmm. that are just like, you know, I've won, you know, or I'm looking for my first. Yeah. I think part of it is just, it's a team deal. You know, like my teammates have been doing a great job of putting great at bats together. Uh, whether it's a hit, uh, running out some balls, creating an error. So now we have first, second, and then the walk, bases loaded. Uh, i just been blessed with opportunities with situations coming up like that and uh, just taking advantage. Like you said, some people, you know, they may not have that many opportunities. I think they were reading it to me. I had like 12 bases loaded opportunities wow. already. So um, just take advantage, man. Gosh, dude, I don't know if you're married or not, but if I had a daughter your age, I would say she needs to marry this guy. <laughs> dude, you're like so nice wow, and so sold. humble, man. I, like it, it's amazing. This is oh, great. And he's you. just yeah. getting going. Chris yeah. just getting started, man. Yeah, and yeah. and you're joining a really good ball club, yeah, obviously, yes. right? Yes. Um, and you've been following them. Even I know you've gone through some injuries and all of that, and it's great to see you back on the field. So um, with this year's team, what do you notice in the second half of the season um, about the offense? Because I know like your, your teammate and I – who did I mention this to? One of your teammates yesterday too, but Max Kepler – is the one that kind of pointed it out first to the media being like, yo, it's different. Second half twins is, is different. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's the energy and the vibe in the clubhouse, uh, the routine, the preparation, our hitters meetings before the games um, where everyone's chiming in like, hey, I face this guy. This is what this pitch looked like. Uh, and so we're getting some good info uh, from player to player. Uh, and then as well in the game, you know, the communication has been key for our hitting side. Uh, I can't speak for the pitchers, but they've been dominant all year for us. So yeah. uh, it's been fun to watch, honestly. And, uh, yeah, it's it's been really good with just that energy. Do you – when you come into a season, I always set my goals. And I would set them high. Yeah. Um, I'm a big goal setter. Say I wanted a bat – you know, say I wanted 60 homers and I have 40. I mean, that's still a pretty good season. You know what I mean? <laughs> some people, no, no, listen. Some people think it's kind of silly to do, but I always set them high. I wanted to bat 330. I batted 300. That's great. So you're batting 308 right now. What I'm trying to get to, like, do you set your goal? Hey, every year I want to bat over 300. Like, do you have goals every every year before you come into play? Yeah, absolutely. You know, personally, like, I just, I, I feel like I can hit, man. You know, I just yeah. have good hands and, and I can put the ball in play and just force the defense to make some plays. And, um, you know, I pride myself on trying not to strike out as much. Um, obviously, it's really hard with this guy's got nasty stuff, you know, <laughs> nowadays. But, um, no, I, I, I went into the season saying, like, hey, no one's batted 400 or well, 500 yeah. why not me why yeah. can't i do mm-hmm. it um and so i that's what i went into and like you said when you look up there and you're like well 300 is still pretty good but yeah. i didn't get to the 500 <laughs> yeah, no, so now next course. year i got something to work for so. yeah no show right. the research let me see the, let me see these forearms here people don't get it baseball players guys these are catfish bellies what people don't understand <laughs> this is why this guy hits many grand slams yeah, got <laughs> thank you, thank you. people don't understand when that's you right. look at a ball player you see these bellies here that's where the power comes from when you're off balance and not in the right spot He's got he's got that it factor. That well, you pitchers don't, don't, so don't look yeah. at mine. Yeah, no. don't look at mine. Yeah. yeah, there's there's no, not no. there's nothing there. So. <laughs> you um, need to be loose. Yeah. So uh, speaking of having good hands at the plate, you're drafted as a shortstop. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys got a pretty good shortstop on oh, the team now. Yeah. yeah. So you've been playing third. How's that adjustment been? And do you miss shortstop? Yeah, uh, I, I miss it in terms of the range factor. I love going and diving up the middle, uh, making a Derek D- Derek Jeter jump throw in uh-huh. the hole. Um, stuff like that. But at third base, you still get a lot of tough plays. It's yeah. a tough position, man. I think, you know, you can't just stick anyone over there. Uh, similar with first base, like the corners are tougher than people give credit for. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the time uh, of the throw, you know, I feel like I have to get my throw off really soon, even with a stronger arm, um, because these guys are all running up the line real fast. Mm-hmm. You know, last night I barely got Ellie De La Cruz and I was just like, <laughs> this. I know he flies, but yeah. Yeah. man, it makes it, it makes it that much tougher to make plays out here. So um, yeah, I love third. It's been a tough transition at first, but you know, now with all the work I've got, in me and preparation we're, we're good good it's funny because as a third baseman i wasn't a third baseman either until my second year finally scott Rowland retired and they said listen it's your job to lose now so yeah. you're a third baseman so i took every detail i wanted to learn who the bunners were what t- what count they bunted in i'd go on every field i'd roll the ball up and down and try and figure out how the ball would go left and right and i'm sure you're doing that homework as well absolutely yeah we got like you know tj friedel bunch with two strikes yeah leads the league with six hits two strike hits wow so we're staying in the entire time and i'm kind of laughing i'm looking back at farmer yesterday when he came in for carlos i said man this guy's still bundled with two you know like no one does this anymore so um you know kudos to him for that yeah. but it keeps the defense on your toes man when, yeah. you keep, when you have a lot of tools to your game and and Bunning is one of them. And like he was, Todd was saying, you know, you got to know the grass. Like this grass is thicker. Yeah. Uh, it's going to catch the ball. 
I had a little tough hop on the way in on a slow roller yesterday. It went, I thought I was going to go with my glove. It bounced to the right. I had to go bare hand. Yeah. And so stuff like that, you got to notice. And the you shortstop hands ballpark. helped out there. Shortstop no doubt. Hands <laughs> yes. Give me a gauge of how much players pay attention to history. Okay. So I'll give you both sides of the spectrum here. On one side, yesterday, we're talking, uh, I think it was Friedel, about the Reds alums and because he was excited to be next to these two guys on the red side and, and said, no, we know about the history. We know about all the players, big red machine, the whole thing on the twins side. I remember we've talked to a couple of twins about this. I think it was Buxton towards the beginning of the year. And they told him like how long the drought's been for the twins. They're making the playoffs. or just haven't picked up playoff dubs. Yeah. Does the team all know about that? Cause like <laughs> fans, especially, you know, you guys are going to be in the playoffs, like come playoff time. You're going to get a million reporters that haven't watched any baseball the whole year that are like for the local news that are going to be like, what about, than whatever the number is 19 in a row like yep. do guys know about that or yeah. is there really a surprise with some dudes being like oh shit i don't know i mean i haven't been <laughs> on any of those teams <laughs> i bet you there's a, a few surprises but most people know they know sure. okay you know, like i think like you mentioned the media they, they bring it up to your attention uh whether they ask you in an interview post game hey looks like you guys are making the playoffs now and you know are you aware of the 0 and 19 or the 0 and 20 and and it's <laughs> it's like I'm aware, but I also was never on those teams, so I couldn't speak for, you know, maybe they ran into a hot team. Maybe they, I mean, it was the Yankees for It was called years. the Yankees, yeah, yeah. yeah. most <laughs> of the time. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a pretty bad, bad team there, but. Uh, you're not playing no, them this year, by the way. Right. Just so you yeah, know, yeah, there's yeah, no right. chance you're playing the Yankees in the playoffs. Yeah, which is a blessing in disguise, right? <laughs> no, but, uh, no, I think for our team, it's just a different team. This year feels a lot more special. Um, the guys are close-knit. It's a great group of guys that just, we love each other, man. We have a lot of fun, and uh, these are some of my best friends, man. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into the playoffs and making some noise is uh is Rocco as cool as he seems like oh, super <laughs> chill you watch yeah. that dude uh, and he's just like hanging out just watching the baseball game yes yes super chill uh he's just laid back man yeah and uh he gives this calming presence for our team in the dugout that's just you know we have a chance knowing you know seven runs in the first we still have a chance we got eight more innings to score and so mm. uh he gives that calming presence and he always has that hope you know that we're gonna win so one thing I've noticed with Rocco, and I know obviously this is the only team you've been on, and so Rocco's the only manager you've had in the bigs, but when we talk to managers before games, when I've called games, some of them are like real talkers, right? R Rocco will just tell us exactly what's going on with each player. Obviously, some of it's kind of like off the record just to sure. give us context. Is he like that with you guys too? Because I've spoken to players that are like, yeah, my manager just kind of, you know, BSs with me a little bit or is right. scared to tell me when he's going to sit me or whatever. Is Rocco like real kind of straight shooter about things. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he just lets you know what, what he what he's thinking, what the team's got on you and, and where we're at, you know, in the standings or whatever it may be, your health. Hey, man, I'm looking two days in advance. Uh, you know, Carlos may need a day off. You might be playing short. Just be aware. Or uh, a farmer's down, so you might be needed to stay a couple more days at third and stuff like that. And so it's just he's in constant communication with every player, uh, letting them know what's going on ahead of time so that we kind of know going into a series, going into the next day, uh, what the plan is. Didn't uh, Rocco have twins yesterday? He had twins. Wow. Yeah. Was it yesterday? Man. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yes. Admitted to the job. Twins on the yeah. twins. Yeah. On, twins <laughs> on the twins. Unbelievable. Is man. he on leave or is he with you guys? Yeah, he's on He's on leave. He's on leave. So okay. he, he left right after our game um, in Chicago. So I would assume Carlos is going to get him a big gift, maybe a good stroller or something. Oh, yeah. We got to get him something <laughs> nice. You know? gotta, that yeah. double stroller. Double he stroller. needs a big double it's stroller. Not, not you. It's not you. That's Carlos. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you got to get the, the big know. contract boys can handle that, right? Oh, yeah. Carlos, yeah. Buck. Buck, yeah. Yeah, yeah we got a few. So. Yeah, you got a few. That's... Pablo, maybe too. Pablo. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. Kent has made some money. He's on the mountain. Sonny. Sonny, that's Sonny, right. Yes, yes. Yeah. Don't, don't dip in your – yeah, you Roy should have not be paying for Alligator dinners, arms when right? that, that stuff Alligator. Yeah. No, no, yeah. No, no. yeah, you can't reach that. It's not even that. It's just the – like, are, are those guys – I mean, you tell me. When you go out with, like, guys like that, or it's, like, immediate, like – Yo, yeah, don't that's, don't that's touch my that. check. Don't yeah, touch that. Did you pay for dinner last night? I yeah, actually I did. Thank no you. way. Yeah. yeah. Well, See, actually, wait. This you're first too round, nice though. This this is one one. Uh, right yeah, here. and deservedly so. Number that's number one overall pick with 2017. Mm -hmm. 2017. Yeah. Yeah, and I get it. He Sexy made a lot signing of money. bonus. Boy, yeah. Yeah. But he still like still shouldn't have to. I mean, Kyle Farmer was there. <laughs> no, but Hunter Green was there. Hunter Green, Green was Hunter there. Green. Nick Lodolo was there. Like, there's a lot of money. Hey, good for you. Yeah, his, yeah you're, I, you're too nice, man. You shouldn't have nah, to pay for that. Made honestly, him pay for the tip at least. How many yeah. days? In, how, how, he got he got valet, maybe. What's you your know? service <laughs> time? What's your service time? Do you know? Like, um, are you, I had 142 days last year, and I've okay. been up the whole year this year, so I don't know. Yeah, I guy, know yeah, that Kyle Farmer year. has more than that. 
<laughs> yeah, well, you know, That's the funny tough. thing is farm, farmers has been taking care of us for many dinners. Yeah. And I've always told them, like, hey, man, come to my room. Let's get room service. Let me do it. You know, yeah. like, I, I want to take care of you yeah. because you, you've you been such a great mentor, leader, teammate, uh, and a great friend for me to have around. And I just, I really appreciate him. So I was like, hey, come to dinner. And then I, I had to see my boy Hunter and Nick, yeah. you know, yeah. like. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen yeah, him in person. It's a tough look. So. You come to another park with your boys and you're paying on the road. Okay. I know. Wait till I talk <laughs> I to you. Hunter was Todd a second pick. Yes, Hunter was a second pick. Yeah. It wasn't like no. he didn't have anything. Right? Listen, I'm out of the game. I just you come you come to my restaurants, I'll take care of you. Same thing on the other. What listen, it's a new world. It's a new age. It's, <laughs> it's a new age. It's all they good. tried, they tried, they tried. I just Oh, good for you. I took you his, grabbed it. Yeah, man, I appreciate them coming out because I know he's starting in a couple of days. I don't want to get him out of his routine, but yep. I definitely wanted to hang out. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, next time, time. Throw, just throw your credit cards in, in, in a hat. You. Throw your credit cards he in a hat. That, yeah. And then who, whatever the way you're picking. They still do better. that? Yeah. Credit card relay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys still relay. do that? Do the guys still do that? Oh, yeah. I remember. Uh, I've been in a couple. Oof. Man, in Cedar Rapids, <laughs> Torrey Hunter came out and was uh, helping coach our team, and we went out with a bunch of players on the team. And he says, all right, guys, you know, card roulette. And he put in a fake card. I don't even know what, what? it was. It was so he put in a fake card. He said, I'm gonna go use the restroom. And he left. <laughs> he left. <laughs> no way. And then he came back like 20 minutes later. He said, Y'all, y'all figured out yet? And we were still arguing who's gonna pay. Like, yeah. dang, no, I can't, I can't do it because we're in low A, so yeah. we don't have the money. Uh man, he plays tricks on us. That was hilarious. And then he got you guys. He ended up taking care of it. Of course, but he was oh just God. messing with us, man. That's that was so funny. That was a cool story for sure. That's so, awesome. That's he said cute. that happened to him many times with Kirby Puckett. Oh, yeah. these guys, That's man. how you learn, man. He's passing it down. It's Is Tori so around the team like because you got some good vets that are around the team, whether because yes. he does some broadcasting too. Yep. Latroy does broadcasting with the squad. Yeah, this year uh, he hasn't done very much broadcasting and okay. he hasn't been around as much, but the lat in the years in the past, he's been around a ton. Um and you talk about Latroy, he's here now. Uh, Paul Molitor comes around a ton. He's Joe a good Mauer, one to talk to. Justin uh, Morneau. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, Tony Oliva, Rod Carew. We got a ton of great athletes. <laughs> nice. and a couple players, Hall of Famers man. there. <laughs> Legendary players. Just yeah. coming around, giving us some advice, and and always just being funny and keeping the clubhouse loose, man, because yeah. they got some funny stories. They got some, you know, just anything that they can throw at you, you always take it in. So like before it. you became a twin, though, you knew about the history of these players, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, because I know a lot of times pl- players these days don't. They don't know – who was there before them or even on other teams, but you knew you already know the legends of the game. I, I, I grew up loving this game. I love it. Like I, I I told my dad when I was young and he told me, you can't be a fan of, you know, Tigers one day, Dodgers the next Mm -hmm. day. Cause we'd go to the angels games because it's closest. Uh And we'd watch, you know, Yankees come in town, Red Sox, whoever. Mm -hmm. And I always said like, yeah, I like, I like that player. I like this player. And he was like, you gotta just, you know, you love the game and you love these attributes that these guys have. Yeah. He's like, just learn from them. You know, like don't, don't, you know, say you like the Tigers one day and then the next day you like the Red Sox. True. And so I just started enjoying the players. And one of my favorite players growing up because Tory came from Minnesota to Angels was Tory Hunter. Um, And so getting to meet him now and have him be a mentor of mine Uh is so special. And then Matt Kemp being on the Dodgers was really special for me to watch. Uh, Derek Jeter, obviously, on the Yankees. Um, and then his family situation, he has biracial family mm-hmm. and that's the same as me. And so, mm-hmm. uh, I just, he was my idol. I wanted to be him. I wanted to be the next Derek that's Jeter. So cool, that was man. my thing. And so now it's, I think everyone wanted to be Derek Jeter. To be <laughs> Have you met him yet? I agree. I've never met him. So he's, he, him and probably Chris Brown, the artist would be the two people I'd be starting. Oh, there you from. go. <laughs> Derek. You'll meet him. Let's go, D- man. Derek's, Derek's, are, you know, kind of around, I would say more than ever right now. Yeah. You know, popping up at games. Yeah. And he doesn't have the Marlins gig, so he doesn't have right. to be like kind of the suit behind yeah, the scenes. Right, right. You know, he's kind of taking more of the player role again. Somebody met Jeter the other day, I think. Willie Adamas. Willie Adamas. Yes, yeah, he went, he Adamas. went absolutely freaking out. Freaking out. So <laughs> Is that what you would do? You would, would act probably, that way too? Yeah. Would you really? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'd right, be so, so nervous. Let, let's do it. Okay. Danny's Derek. Okay. Give me, like, set the scene. What would you do? Like, suddenly Derek Jeter's sitting next to you. You came on the show for a sec. Wow, wow. Like, what are you doing? And, and what are you saying? If Derek's oh. just kind of quiet there, like, you can be Derek. Just like, hey, what's up? Hey, I've watched you play. You're good. Like, hey, man, don't bring up anything that I did off the field. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that is not what he Keep it down. Yeah, keep it down. Keep it down. Oh, I've got I, a I, would, I guess I would say, man, uh, it's great to meet you. Uh, I really appreciate everything you, you did and, and accomplished in this game, um, how you handled yourself on and off the field whether it was in the papers or not, um, <laughs> it, it truly made me the best version of myself, and I really appreciate it. Wow. Yeah, Tell yeah and then cool. I'd say, can you sign this ball? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and a jersey. <laughs> and a bag. And a bag. And, 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 and a picture that you're wearing. Yeah, yeah, a picture. And then I'd ask him for as much advice as possible, so whatever he's willing to give, because that is, that is awesome. he's doing it right, man. So, That's so really we cool. need to set this up, dude, and then you can give foul territory we, all the credit. I would love to do that. We can do that. Yeah, we'll reach out. So In the meantime, dude, 
Great to uh, have you on here oh, for the thanks, first John. time. Thanks so You're much. Awesome yeah, thank you. an awesome thanks interview. Keep joining. it up, really man. It. Yeah. Uh, we'll watch you tonight. Good luck and keep crushing it and have fun in the playoffs. Thank too, you. Dude. Yeah, you guys stay cool, man. This is hot. I'm Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> so. We got about 15 minutes left we to are cook. So. Yeah. yeah, you all can right. cook eggs on the back of my neck at this point. So it was yeah, all good. we're good. It's all good. But we got to chat with you. So Thank you, bro. Thank you, Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah great course. to have you on. Oh, yeah. uh, Royce Lewis with us from the uh, Minnesota Twins. As you can see there, Twins taking on the Reds tonight. We're going to be here. Danny got us hooked up in the in the good seats tonight, by the way. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, my pleasure, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun up there. It is we won't need any glasses time. up there for no, sure. No, but we do need them right now. So little shout out to Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses company offering a world class product just as good as any expensive pair that you've ever put on. Okay. Durable frames, which you need. You need durability today. Whew. It's hot. We're all bumping into each other at an extremely clear optics for uh, outdoor adventures. Also, of course, if you lose your pair, if you break your pair, um, even on day one, they'll send you a new pair. Uh, that's part of the lost and broken replacements. And if you don't love the pair that you've got, like maybe Todd father is the same pair and you're like, oh, I'm going to look as good as Todd. And then you put them on and you're like, nope, Todd looks better. That's OK. <laughs> you can exchange them for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. No risk when you shop. And exclusively for the Foul Territory fam, the code is on the screen. It is FOUL, F-O-U-L, all caps, for 50% off. Two-plus pairs of polarized sunglasses at ShadyRays.com. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. You know what? They do have prescription sunglasses. Yeah, they do make those. So you're good. Oh, you looked that. it up? Yeah, didn't I? There you go. Yeah, didn't I? Yeah. Who do you think he is? <laughs> I am. He said. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Shout yeah, out so to the Danny bowler, Graves is him. That that. Uh, Newsflash: Danny Graves is him. Um, <laughs> all right. So I do want to spend a few minutes on a uh, player perspective for this. It, it is hot corner time, and we're gonna get like the full details from Ken Rosenthal tomorrow. There have been two articles that are just sweeping through the city of, of San Diego right now and also just kind of sweeping the baseball world, too, because one of the most disappointing teams this year, a team that I thought would win the World Series, the San Diego Padres certainly have the talent on paper. They were terrible in one run games. They were terrible. 0 for 11, 0 and 11 in extra inning games. Mm. Just a brutal year for the ball club. Never really in it either, you know? It wasn't even like, oh, they're close. Like, you kept going, oh, they're going to make a run, right? Oh, they're, they're five, six games back. They're going to make a run. It never happened for them. So anyway, there was an article that came out on Friday from Kevin Acey of the San Diego Union Tribune talking about the team and how he spoke to many people around the ball club about what went wrong. And then he spent 30 minutes with Machado, and some of the quotes that stood out for many were just kind of, putting down the whole clubhouse culture part of things as in like trying to make that a problem where he didn't feel like a it was a problem and also just thought in general and I'm paraphrasing a little here for Manny but that it was overrated and there was like a line where he's like you know what is this high school what is this college so he went over some of that to try and shoot it down a little bit Ken Rosenthal comes out with an article with Dennis Lynn in, in the athletic and just you know has people on the record talking about a toxic culture and all that and we're probably going to get cut off because we got another guest joining us in a sec so uh, we'll get to that, but just wanted to uh, throw that out there, and then we'll swing back at it as we don't have our. Uh, we're gonna sw we're gonna swing back. So, if you want our thoughts on it? You're probably gonna have to wait until the end of the show or until tomorrow because we got Joe Ryan staring <laughs> at us right now, and he's about to join us next on FT Live. Have you have any arguments yet? Game too early. Like we got a great <laughs> play by play last week. I don't think either of you were on or maybe caught it, but. Um, Brandon Woodruff mm -hmm. pitched a complete game shutout last week, and he was going over, like, the exact number. I think council was like, fine, okay, but you don't get to go over whatever the number was, one, <laughs> 108 or whatever, right? And then he's on the mound like, shit, I got nine pitches left, whatever, <laughs> really? right? Like, fastball, fastball, he gave fastball, us the yeah, whole play-by-play, yeah. play and it was fascinating, just, like, the back yeah. and forth. And obviously, he's been in the league for a bit, mm -hmm. but Good is there ever a time where you're up there and you're like, uh, give me, give me I really more. don't fight when he comes <laughs> out. I think the only time that I did was in Milwaukee. I kind of gave him one of the – like I was like 110 pitches or something, and I going against Owen Miller, division rivals. Like, hey, I oh, you gave, I'll, he gave I'll, him the hand. Here. I'll give oh, him yeah. this, and then yeah, yeah. afterwards he was like, I didn't see it, and I was yeah. telling me I was like, no, I did it. Like, you can go back and look. I did this. Yeah. And you didn't see it, but it was there. 
and then I ended up getting him out, and then he found out afterwards. But that's probably the only thing that's remotely close. Did he like it? Did he say like, "Yeah, give me that once in a while"? I'm, I'm, I mean, he he can probably speak to that a lot better. But I would <laughs> I would assume though? that a Who coach would, yeah. would like competitors, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So unless they were gung ho, one hundred percent, you're coming out. I don't care what you did, but that's how you get respect. And that's how you, you get a player. Like yeah. when we had it, it was Johnny Cueto mm -hmm. when he came out. Hey, 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 oh. And all of a sudden, Dusty Baker, gotcha. Yeah. Like he understood. Yeah. And that's the relationship that you're starting to have with your manager. And I think it's awesome. FT Live keeps rolling. Braun, Frazier, Graves. And can you do the introduction for us, Yeah, please? The, this is my dog, Joe Ryan. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we played uh, Olympic qualifiers together. Mm -hmm. We played in the Olympics together. Uh, we started in Port St. Lucie. We dominated then. Um, making it to the Olympics. We ended up winning a silver medal together. Mm -hmm. So long story short, you know, you have a roommate you live with in the Olympics and well, I don't even know what you call them, the apartment buildings yeah, you're yeah. in. So we actually the had, village? yeah, the, the village. village. So we had, there was two single beds and then two double beds in this village. So I had it with Tim Fedorovich. We're in a double bed mm -hmm. sleeping on cardboard and his room was right next to us. It was you and um, Shane Boz. Shane Boz. I wonder what he's doing now. Where's he at? He's rehabbing right now. He'll, he'll be back. He next did year. get hurt. Yeah, okay. Yeah, with, the Rays. with the Rays. Yeah. And who else was in the other two we with had Kaz and uh, David Robertson too? Yeah, we had we had a group. And we had it, two two. The best part though, we had two bathrooms in the whole little complex, <laughs> and we had a balcony. So we so Boz and I had the good room with the balcony, and then we had our own bathroom. <laughs> And then Todd, Kaz, and uh, David Robertson and Tim had to share one bathroom oh, for man. all of them. So we were trying Wait, first he off, was trying Kaz? to get us out of there. Um, Scott Kaz. Scott Kaz. Oh, Sorry, Scott Kaz. We, we had a good yeah. group in there. Wait, how, how did someone like you get screwed over? I got screwed so over. So we started your cleats. Listen, I was better. I was bad. I was mad. And they're playing music. I'm yelling, you know, I'm trying to take a nap. I'm screaming. He's calling me an old man over there. They're, they're putting it on louder. Fedorovich is snoring. I mean, I never heard anybody snore that loud in my life. <laughs> it was, the walls were thin. Like, it was just – I had to – so I ended up getting my own room. I was complaining so much. Well, we got in on, like, a 25, 26-hour travel day. Oh, so when we man. got in, like, no one knew the situation. No was, one like, knew what was going on. It was COVID out. year, oh, and we hilarious. were like – we had no clue what to do, but the gear was sick that we got. The gear was sick. The parades yeah. were sick. We ended up getting a silver medal. We should have won the final, but – you know, it was, uh, we had a fun, I had such a fun time. That was oh. the end of my career. Pretty well, not pretty much. It was it. That's so, a good way um, to go out. Though, it was a good the, way. the cardboard bed. That it, sucks. What's the ring that you were talking about before we came on? Oh, we, if you participate in the Olympics, you get a, like a, a ring. Uh -huh. That's, that's pretty cool. One of my, my dad's friends was skiing in the Olympics and I was always admiring that, but I never got my ring. <laughs> so amazing. hopefully someone listens to that. Yeah, well, what? That Dude, we, can, we can do this. We'll get clip that this off. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll I got my Paul Siler up. We'll hit up Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll get it for you. But, yeah, that's how, you know, basically that's what kick-started you a little bit going forward. I, was, yeah. I mean, you were good, but, you know, to get good. the name out there even a little more, he was he was one of our top dogs out there. But yeah. didn't Joe, isn't the story, and I'm sure you've said this a million times, that you found out about the, the trade when you were at the Olympics, Yeah, we were at breakfast the next morning. Were you with him? Yo, yeah, we were all there. Was, we were yeah, we were all at breakfast. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Eric Falia came over and he's like, hey, the Rays just made a trade. Yeah. So <laughs> Boz and I kind of looked Boz at each other. We're like, dude, it's, uh, I mean, someone's uh, getting traded. So, like, what yes. do I do? They're, they're, like, that's that's one thing, that story that i will never get old because you're not even playing with your team. You're like, so how am I going to get the shit out of my apartment? You know? <laughs> right. Are we just going to trade where, where we're living situation? So it was perfect, though. I yeah. mean, just having like, we had 25 days there. So we had. A lot of time I was like just focused on yep. that then anyway. So it was just like, okay, we're here for an, another month and have some fun, try to win a gold medal and then go back and we made it made it easy. Let me ask you something about the Olympics. What was sure. I'll tell you when we'll probably say the same thing, but what was the most fun you've had or you had at the Olympics? Like what was besides playing the games, what was the most fun like you, you had in Japan? And, and anything I'll, goes. And I'll tell you, can I tell you mine first? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for We're it. just going to eat at the oh cafeteria. My, yes. Every I'm telling time. You, we've seen, I call them specimens, athletes from different nations. And I'm telling you, from, from women to men, some of the unbelievable bodies you'll ever see in your life. I mean, how about going to the weight room? Going to the weight room, just like, oh, yeah. I mean, we, I felt like we kind of snuck in there because we were like these like normal looking guys, <laughs> and we just like freak athletes. And we were always just like, yeah, we just got like, everyone's training for their life to be here. And we're like, 
Oh, yeah, we just got a call a month ago that we're coming here to, to <laughs> we come just play, play baseball. baseball. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like everyone was done at the end of the year. So that like their dedication and focus was just another level. But it was cool. Like, remember one day Boz and I were lifting and like the co- head Korean strength coaches in there, like correcting our form. And like we oh, couldn't communicate yeah. really verbally uh-huh. with him. But it was awesome to just get to work with different people, see different people. Um, one of my high school teammates for, from water polo was there. And he was playing with uh, USA, and they did pretty well for themselves. And um, just seeing, yeah, di- all the different athletes, it was it was pretty crazy. Do you remember seeing some of the countries they were bench pressing, and then they did they did uh, cleans, and the guy he he warmed up with two twenty five on each side, just twenty like this, boom. Then he would put two more forty five. Like I'm telling you, they were benching five hundred plus, <laughs> and the coach is like, hara, 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 like screaming at him in Russian or whatever it was, and he's like he's like. I got this. And in his way, he's like, boom, 500 pounds, nothing. Next. Oh my God. And the yeah. women were doing the same it was, thing. It was wild. It was unbelievable, man. We're playing ping pong with the Koreans. That was fun. And they were unbelievable. I thought I was good. Yeah. Well, us Asians. I'm, yes. I'm Asian, yes. so I can say this, that we're good at ping pong. Very good. But it just, it's a different perspective of what we went through. And it's the memories that, that I'll never forget there. But the cafeteria, trading oh. pins, and – you know, the specimens, I call them, in all the best ways possible, <laughs> that walk by. And we're in there for like two hours just like, bro, did you see that? Did you? I mean, it was just – it was unbelievable. Luca cool. walking around Oh, in my there. God, yeah, yeah. Paul Gasol. Luca Doncic oh, just oh, walking yeah, around. The NBA yeah, yeah, some of them. Some right? of them, yeah. I yeah. think the USA guys have their own hotels. Well, yeah, the, of course. Guys, like, yeah. can I get a picture? Like, we're all taking pictures with everybody. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, you mentioned water polo. You played water polo? Yeah, Dude, growing up. How hard is that? It's not that hard when you're in shape, so well, I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, he's, he's if I get back in the pool right now, I might, I might drown. But, uh, <laughs> well, I, yeah. well, he wouldn't be lying. I've never been in shape, so I, <laughs> you just I get tread it. water forever. Yeah, it's it's polo, weird right? though because you'll get in great cardio shape. You'll be amazing swimming shape, and you're moving around. You're like, I could do anything. I could run a marathon right now, and then I'd come out for baseball and start running. And it's like that first hundred yards, and I'm gassed. So <laughs> it's never it never seemed to translate well. But um, you yeah, ever like dunk sport. somebody when you're going to yeah push and shot? get get dunked and uh, and dunk some people too. Oh, so man. yeah, it's it's a it's fun physical, sport though. Right? Yeah, it's pretty physical. yeah man. It's a good time though. That's, That's intense. Cool. So you partnered with Grateful Dead and a t-shirt company. Talk oh, yeah, about how much yeah, talk yeah, about that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That. I, yeah. I was we were just kind of picking walkout songs. So each start, I was kind of just trying to decide what I should go through in spring. Um, was it last year? Yeah, and just landed on. Uh, speaking of Boz, blasting music. There's probably some good Grateful Dead tunes in there. So, um, yeah, landed on Fire on the Mountain and kind of went forward with that. And then the, I don't know if someone from the Twins or the Dead reached out to, to them and they got it going and they wanted to do a T-shirt and um, homage put it together it was it was great and uh, made it easy and got to design um two of them and then they surprised me with another one so that's awesome pretty sweet that's have, cool have you been to shows i went to their last show you in went san, to the francisco. san francisco yeah show? no Rock, way rock let me uh hang back after the a's start wow. and i yeah my dad and my girlfriend and i that's went cool. and uh and then flew up to seattle so it was, it was a good time was it wild it was it was pretty special yeah they uh they hit some hit some pretty good ones and watching Getting John Mayer in there too now is uh that's it was pretty fun to see. That's really cool. Yeah, Dude, yeah. You know I had some friends with, that went there. You just call them the dead. Exactly. Like not there grateful dead, the dead. Yeah, that's exactly. It's good. What's up, son? How's this guy helped you out at all? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Actually, you want to try? <laughs> yeah, it's not. What you want? Take take whatever you want, but this is. But Sonny, you got to do it over in the camera see, a little bit. <laughs> Sonny, come this way. Come this way a little bit so they can Teaser. catch you. Yeah. What is it? Come behind us. <laughs> no nicotine. Yeah. Well, you got to try it, it first, right? Makes it easier. I've, I've, I haven't tried one yet, to be honest. Wait, let me give them Yeah, one. what are they? Got some flavor? Too much? Do you like tropical? Spice or not? Do you like yeah. coffee? <laughs> you want... Hey, get a citrus one in there. No, <laughs> one of the mints, probably. It's cool, it's mint. Mango, Take. Like Ooh, that's spice. spice. That's fire. It. I like spice. A little that's kiss. Nice. What you think, Joe? I don't know. If there's a citrus one in there, I got that in my back pocket, but... I'll give you a shot. Mint, mint's my favorite. Yeah. Got a little spice yeah. to it. Got Take one. You want well, one? The, the habanero. You. We got a billion. There you go. All right. All right report it, back. Man. We'll be here. How's this cooking. guy doing, dog? He's awesome. He's the best, right? Love him. He's a good one. He said he played with you in uh, yeah, the Olympics. Olympic oh, we had a blast. A lot of good stories. Good to see you. <laughs> you too, Sonny. Good stuff, man. You know, yeah. half the time when guys walk by, by the way, I don't even know if they know, like, we're on or not. They're just like, hey, what's up? Yeah. So. No, he doesn't care. He'll come in whenever. He, yeah. He's the best. Yeah, that was uh, funny enough. We were talking about it that before 
he even came over to the twins was we were talking about teammates and stuff and hanging out with Casimir and talking to him about it. And I, several guys mentioned he's the best teammate they've ever had. And I mean, it's getting him over here was pretty exciting Dude. for me. Just watching him uh, being in the Bay area too, growing up was super fun. So getting to play with him is, is pretty special, but I mean the best teammate ever. What makes someone the best teammate ever? I think <laughs> one just leading by example. Um, I mean, he goes about his business the right way and um, really just sets a good tone for the whole staff and, and the rotation. So, I mean, that's, that's one side. And then I think just, I mean, off the field stuff, hanging out, having a good time, being a good dude, but you also just know that the focus is there all the time and, and winning baseball games and um, just having a lot of success in his career and, and just seeing what that takes and learning from him. And he, he's a, a great mentor um, so yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of things that go into it, but, uh, I heard you're a good grid guy. Grid guy. Is that true? Immaculate grid. Immaculate do you play? grid. Do you play? No, you don't play. Do you know what it is? No, I don't. Know oh, perfect. Is. Seriously? So you're shocked. All right. We're right going to No it. way. Seriously. All right. I've never heard of it either. Cause we heard you're like, going to set it up. We, heard your, we have it. Your, uh, okay. You're like it, a genius. Right? Yeah. Oh no. God. So, no. so yesterday, Pablo Lopez, <laughs> come on, Pablo Lopez here. I'll, I'll set the scene here. So Pablo Lopez told us yesterday that like, sometimes you guys will be chilling in the dugout when you guys are both not pitching on a day and you'll come up to him with some like really good inside stats on like the team or like some good scouting reports. And he's like, honestly, it's really helping me um, in my start sometimes. Like if I, if I need something like, yo, Joe, what, what do you think about this team? Or, Hey, how do you get this guy out? He said, you've been great. And sometimes he's like, you'll pull some like really obscure info and he'll be like, no way. And then he'll like look it up and he's like, Oh, it's true. So he was like, Joe's like the savant basically. Oh God. Yeah. I, I'm trying to dive into it more and, and learn, learn more about like the underlying statistics and stuff. And I yeah. think it helps with just like, especially when I've, I've had enough rough outings this year to like kind of break them down and just understand like w why this may have might have happened and and how you can get better for the next time and and learning like some details that might look really bad like oh you gave up this many runs but it's like how did those runs come across the plate and um that's been interesting a process to go through but pablo's actually really helped me as well so like working on looking at scouting reports looking at other pitchers seeing how he was going about that and dissecting that. Um, it's been fun to go over. We've kind of been doing that more, I would say, in the last two months or so. Yeah, and Pablo, uh, I mean, he's you can tell. Oh, my he's God. A great speaker. Yeah. He's super nice. Yeah. So, all right, what we want to do here is, and and it's sunny, but look at the screen. Okay. We're going to play a game called Immaculate Grid. Immaculate this Grid. is, like, very popular in the baseball world. Oh, okay. So, you that's just the beginning of it. You haven't heard about this? Like, I've, I've, so, I've seen this. You've yeah, seen yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because, like, some teams, because, you know, we talk to current players every day on our show. Like, um, apparently, the Yankees all play it, like, every day together. The okay. whole thing. Okay. Oh, so, never played for those teams, across so. the board <laughs> here, we have Boston, Oakland A's, and someone's going to have to read that what for that me. that one? 30-plus stolen plus base season? 30-plus stolen base season. Okay. Now, now, down the left column, you've got hmm. the Nationals, the Brewers, and the Astros. All right. Now, you need to cross those together. Okay. So, so I need to find a player that's played for the Both. Red Sox and the the one that Red Sox in the in yeah, Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you don't want anybody popular. You get more points for guys that oh. nobody's ever heard yeah. of in a while. But oh, if you're shit. wrong, it dings you bad. It is bad. Yeah. So you don't want to be wrong. So you All don't right. want to be too bold where you're like, eh, I don't really oh, remember. You also want to win. Yeah. Oh, Man, Lord. I'm so bad at this I'm game. Be sitting on this for a while. Can I jump around? Too? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Anywhere yeah, you want to yeah. go. There's no um, order. Um. Oh my. Did Nigel Morgan get thirty up? Bags of Washington or no? Mm. That's a good Who question. Who told me I was good at this? It's a good question. And they just <laughs> started the timer on us because they think um, that we're talking too much. Oh, did, did Wade Miley, is he the Brewers in Boston? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Good. There you go. All right. Good start. There we go. Good Let's start. see how much Joe can, Joe can do. We'll try and help um, him out, though. Okay. Uh, Boom. Houston. 3%. I'm, I'm just thinking Houston, Boston now. Um, Houston, Boston. Chris Young. Outfielder Chris Young. Did he play for yeah. Houston? Oh, yeah, I think so. Wasn't he on some of the terrible Houston teams, like when they were tanking? I, I don't, I'm pretty yeah, sure he I, did. There'll be some obvious ones later that I'm that gonna was be after so me. Upset. Um, um, guys, I got one here. Um, Christian Vasquez. Oh my yeah. god! There yeah, you go. Christian Vasquez. There yeah, we go. There oh, hey, for Houston rings, and Boston. Too. Do the rings count at extra points? <laughs> no extra. There? No extra. It's just got to be rare. So let's that's see. Like What's rare? the percentage? Twenty-four percent. See, that's not good. No, that's not good. See that's that too common. Right there? Oh, it's last year, too, so it's it's relevant. Um, Boston Nationals. 
I keep hmm. just only thinking about pitchers. Um, okay. Clearly, we were misinformed on this one. A's and Brewers? I'm thinking. Boys, you got to. I'm, I'm lost. I'm I got to keep here. thinking. Well, you want to try stolen bases? Do you know the Morgan? stolen bases? You want to no. try Nigel Morgan? Morgan? And with Washington, I see. I don't look at position players. They're just outs with helmets on. That's all. I think. <laughs> <laughs> with Washington, Washington TikTok's going to go, love that. Uh, Montreal Expos too. Oh, the... God. oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, that helps Joe <laughs> yeah, a lot. Because he remembers the Expos <laughs> days. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was negative ten when the of Expos now. were done. I have heard Tim of Tim Raines. Yeah. Tim Raines was a. The Rock is in the building. Oh, Tim Raines is good. Yeah. Okay. Tim Raines for for rock. the thirty would stolen base. Yeah, wouldn't have, wouldn't have got that. What's the percentage? Eighteen uh, percent. That's fine. Uh, I'm not even worried about the percentages because we've got like stuff cat. against us. Milwaukee. Oh, I'm staring at the screen, thinking it's going to like show. I I here. do have one. I'll I'll throw okay, out there. Let's hear it. So and a pitcher. I'm trying to stay to the okay. pitcher, so we don't have those auto outs. Uh, Sean Doolittle for Oakland oh, and yes. Washington. Yes. Washington. Okay. That's yeah. a good one. Jersey boy. Let's see what we got. <laughs> there it is. Claudia. Twenty-six percent. Yeah. It's high. I, we're just trying to get <laughs> accuracy here. Accurate. I'm just trying to cover the board. Altuve yeah. have thirty plus bases. Yeah, yes. he's well, Biggio oh, did. Oh, okay, there you go. Let's go, Craig Biggio for thirty plus for Houston. There we go. You heard of him, right? Yes. Jersey guy. Seventeen <laughs> percent. Actually, not as high as I thought it would have been. Hit all the Jersey guys. I'm trying. All right, we're about halfway through. We got two and a half minutes left. Oh, I got none of these deals. Lorenzo Cain had twenty with Paul Molitor. Twenty. Paul Molitor had 30 with Milwaukee, Milwaukee right? There we go. Yeah. I know Paul. All right. Um, oh, 16%. Who played with? Oh, damn. All right, we the got A's. three Nobody left. Nobody knows who plays with the A's, A's. though. Did um, Delman Young? Oh, I'm losing it. I got one for Boston and Washington. Is Eric Chavez only in Oakland? See who you got? Eric he Chavez. played for the Yankees no, too. Yankees. Right now. Yeah, he did play for the Yankees. Oakland, but I don't I think he got Milwaukee or Houston. I okay. got Boston in the Nationals. Oh. How much time we got? Uh, we got a minute and a half left. Any of these? All right, awesome. so I got a guy who played for the Nats because we just talked about him the other sure. day. It was it was quick, um, and a little Boston time. Hurry Kyle up. Schwarber. Schwarber. Yeah, we got to yeah. do it. That's like, come on, spit it out. We only got a minute left. All right, one minute left. We Milwaukee need guys that were on A's Houston and Oakland. Almighty. I mean, you got to have someone on the computer there. Like, let's just start looking at that. Houston and A's. And Milwaukee and Oakland. Oh, what's his name? Jed Lowry? Oh. Did he play for Houston? Yes. Um, Houston and Oakland. That yeah. should be good. Jed Lowry, Houston and Oakland? Oh, I played with him in the Hawaii Winter League on the A's in Houston. See, Joe, it's tall, hard. Tall black All right, guy. there we yeah, go. Black guy, first base. I'm glad I what's got the one. percentage on Jed? Oh, man. A's, Brewers. For Houston 6%. and 6%. Oh, you already got one. One left. Percent. We got a minute left. We need an Oakland A's player crossed with a Milwaukee Brewer. I mean, that should be Who's easy. Who's this guy here? Come on he over here real quick. You got a second? Hey, A's. You got five Who's seconds. A, oh, you'd be good at this. Yeah. A's, A's, and, Brewers. A's, A's and, Brewers. and Brewers. We're doing the grid. Someone that played for both right here, the A's right and the Brewers. On the grid. We're on we got, the Immaculate we got 30 Grid. Seconds. You're on TVP. I don't know if he played for the A's. I've got an idea. John Axford. He, yes, I know he, he was did. Milwaukee, he but he I think he played for there. the Oakland A's. Thoughts? All uh, right, we, we got it. We got it. 0.9%. Thank you. Let's, Let's go. go. See, All right. You Thank Vegas. you. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. So that was your first time playing? The, uh, officially yes. yes we okay i now that i'm remembering like I, I just don't know the names of things a lot of times we'll be be shouting them out in the training room sometimes. there you go oh so you guys have played yeah, yeah, okay yeah, a, little so, a little different once you start doing it on your own phone you're gonna be like sucked in oh man. they got it on the phone oh yeah, yeah it's on course. baseball I reference try, i gotta thing. try this yeah, oh, yeah. yeah i've got heat exhaustion so i don't even remember what we just did but Thanks, we pulled it off appreciate you coming on hey, you great guys. to have you Thanks on you got this olympic laptop rolling hey did they give this to you it is we got this too yeah they got they gave you guys laptops oh yeah but you didn't get a ring i don't yeah no we're working we're getting that yeah within the week it'll be you get gold or silver for the ring I don't you even remember what the gold. hell I got. I'm saying he, he got, got gold. gold. Got Jersey gold. guy, he got gold. I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah but we we had a silver medal, so I didn't. I was yeah. debating, but no, you gotta you go gotta, gold. You gotta go gold. Yeah. Yeah. So, I got right, it. So I know where it is. I got to look. You wear it mail within a week. Yeah. Hopefully. Oh yeah. Of course. I'm <laughs> thinking um, the Godfather. I think I got it too big to be honest with you. It doesn't fit my thumb. Maybe I don't know. Whatever. Give it to Give it to Joe. Maybe Joe. Yeah. You can have it. Yeah. your name on it. Of course. Yeah. 
All right. This All has right. to happen. Yeah. All hey, right, guys. Joe, great to see you, man. Thank Appreciate you so much. Thanks, don't, man. don't walk away until we got him taken out. <laughs> Enjoy that bubbly when you guys clench here a couple of days. Thanks, Let's Joe. Go. Good to see you, man. Good seeing you. Me too. Appreciate that. Joe Ryan of the Minnesota Twins with us. That was cool. fun. That was like very that. stressful de- doing that. I'm sweating even doing more. The grid out We're here. doing the grid. Yeah. The, All right. Let's slap hands. Doing the gritty. So first off, something I would definitely like to do, and this was an idea we talked about recently, is especially in the off season when we bring some of our players on, let's play gritty with them. That's even so if they legit. don't even know what it is, it's still fun. Just it's getting one time. name out of them. That was fun. I yeah. like that. Do we have a little amp action today? It's coming soon. Oh. There was a guy going at it with me yesterday on Twitter, and I was like, listen, I don't have time to go back and forth <laughs> texting basically with you on Twitter, on replies. Can you please just go on amp and talk? So maybe it's him. I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, on uh, AMP, you can follow us at Foul Territory, and you can talk to us live on the show. So let's bring in today's guest. What's your name, your favorite team, and your question or comment for the boys? Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, please. It seems to be a common issue. Unmute yourself so we can hear you. Trying, <laughs> efforting. Let's see if we can get him. I know this is riveting to watch. If you're <laughs> on YouTube right now, you're like, oh. let's see. I hope it's not the guy like trying to call and scream at you. I, I think it. I think it's fine. Can I try one of those coffee pouches right there? Yeah, yeah get it to him. A little tease action. There you go. <laughs> oh, it's open already. <laughs> Healthy dip. We got to take two of them. We're gonna pull yeah, the plug. No, you can't. Tasty. All it's right. a no show. No worries. All right, guy we picked doesn't know how to use it. We'll teach him. We'll get him tomorrow. Um, but want to thank uh, the Cincinnati Reds for letting us hang yeah, out on great. the ballpark and get our tan on. Um, <laughs> also, props again to. Uh, Bet MGM for opening up the new sports book right across the street. We're actually due back there to hang out with uh, some mascots and all that and hopefully win some money tonight. We'll be at the game. If you're watching us live right now in Cincinnati and you want to maybe see us from a distance, maybe we'll come give you high fives. I don't know. Let's go. Um, we're going to get some food. And then we are doing our show live tomorrow from a different location in Cincinnati. So stay uh, tuned to our socials. We'll let you know where we're going to be. Bring on more guests tomorrow. Uh, Ken Rosenthal tomorrow to break down that story that I teased about the San Diego Padres and Freddie Peralta on that start against Adam Wainwright, which should be cool. So we will see you on Wednesday on FT Live. I need aloe. I got sunburn all over myself. <laughs>